first, I thank the Lord for without His grace, I won't be standing in front of you and for allowing me this opportunity to share one of my faith journeys. Every age and every stage of life brings different tests and different level of testing. No one gets through life without trials. No one enjoys it. You cannot pray away the test of life or quote scripture and make them disappear. God never promised us a trouble-free trip to heaven, and this is the reality of life. Thankfully, we serve a good God who provides faithfully, especially when we hit rock bottom for us to discover that He is the rock. On November 2005, Arby, my eldest son, was hospitalized for a week. I just thought it was just an ordinary flu, or worse, it could be pneumonia. Prior to his discharge, his primary physician saw nothing unusual in his chest x-ray, as well as the other tests conducted by EENT doctor because of the lump on his neck. But nonetheless, he called a pulmonologist to order a chest CT scan. The, re the result of the <coughs> CT scan revealed that my son has lymphoma. And when thoracic surgeon conducted an operation to get a specimen on his chest for frozen biopsy, it was already stage four, lung cancer. When my son learned his condition, he asked me, why God did give me cancer? I am not a bad person. And at the time, he was only 22 years old, just a college graduate. I don't steal, I don't kill, but yes, I will admit, I like girls. That's what he told me. And all I can answer was, I really don't know, but one thing for sure, there is a purpose for that. You are not alone in this journey. That's what I assured my son. I am with you. Throughout that journey, tension was going on, bills were piling up, and fear sets in our hearts. In my own quiet time, I was not able to say anything to the Lord because I know that for every problem, God has a solution. At that time, God gave me wisdom to not to entertain self-pity self and discouragement by reminding me that He created everything, even the storm, and therefore He can control and stop the storm in our life if He wants to. So my son and I prayed fervently for His healing and so as the Bread of Life Ministries stood in the gap to pray for his past recovery. Three months passed, there was no healing. On the fourth month, my son told me, while he was in pain, to stop praying for his healing, but instead just praise and worship the Lord. Eventually, that became his pain reliever when he was in pain. On March 19, 2006, God answered our prayers. He healed my son. No more pain, no more tears, because Arby ascended to heaven. <coughs> that circumstances that my son and I went through was beyond our control, yet we have a choice how to respond to the situation in order to learn from that experience. And these were the lessons I learned. First, he is in total control of whatever storm in our life and will use the trial for his purpose. Of course, we all pray for healing when we are sick or in trouble. We even say God will make a way of escape. Yet after Arby's death, God showed me the answer through the story of Paul and Silas <coughs> that while they were in prison, doors miraculously opened. They realized that was not God's plan for them to escape, but to stay there and win the jailer and family to Christ. God did not heal Arby physically as a way of escape, but instead he used Arby's life story to become his story and bring glory to his name. We have relatives who got saved after attending Arby's funeral service, and 80% of the youth in one of the summer youth camp accepted Jesus Christ after the presentation of Arby's story. Number two, he taught me that the highest form of worshiping Him in prayer was while I'm in the middle of pain and crisis. My prayer life never had been the same again after that experience. I thought then that the more things I do for God, the more I know Him. 
But actually, the opposite was true. The more I learned to live simply in God's presence, the more I experienced the fullness of His love. I feel much better now when I am wrestling in prayer with God because I know we have a close encounter or, or contact. And lastly, after that journey, the Father offered us potential to grow. As we were moving on after Arby's death, I considered those hardships as exercises in trust and times to learn more fully who God is and how great His power and love to us. While difficulties cause many people to worry, I have God's peace. This inner serenity does not depend on whether circumstances improve. Rather, it's a result of my personal relationship with Him. I cannot express my gratitude for God's hands working in my life and the way He used adversity. They are painful, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to become all the Lord has planned for me and be part of His master plan for our family. Just as He never leaves me, nor forsakes me, this promise is also for you. A wonderful promise or gift because from this awareness, He offers a sense of comfort, courage, and confidence. Look at the lens of life with understanding the power of hope, the power of focus, the power of purpose, and the power of expectation. Then you will live above your circumstances and begin to see God's faithfulness to you. And it will make you want to be faithful to Him. My name is Violi, and I am saved by His grace, all for His glory. Amen.